What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Team Fish Knuckles YouTube channel. Um, today we are doing our top ten cards for Ultra Prism. But actually, what we're doing is doing a community edition, with, like what we always do. Uh, we actually don't get just my input. I ask everybody on Facebook, on the Team Fish Knuckles page, maybe Fairbank, maybe Hey Fonte, whatever you're part of. I post on there. Hey guys, what are your favorite cards from Ultra Prism? These aren't the best. Uh, these are probably, I guess you'd consider them the most hyped uh, cards. I guess this will probably say is the most hyped, uh, but definitely the favorite cards of the set because we don't know what the best cards are just yet. I mean, people can just hype and say, hey, this card's the best, this card's the best. I actually hate when people and other YouTubers say, hey, this card's the best, go out to buy this. And I, I hate when they give false hope like that. I'm not going to ever say that on my channel. I'm just like, hey, these little cards look somewhat good. Uh, maybe you should test them out. I That's all I'm going to say about them. Uh, I, I haven't tested a set. I still haven't looked at all the cards yet of Ultra Prism. I've been so busy. Focus on Dallas Regionals, which we got 46th place. Now we need to start focus on Collinsville, which is in two weeks. Not this weekend. It's next weekend. Uh, Valentine's Day weekend. You get to spend it with me truly if you're going to Collinsville. Uh, so today, we're going to Sun and Moon, Ultra Prism, and Top 10 Cards, uh, provided by the community. Also, how do you like my glasses? I can now see clearly. Can't wear my contacts for a week or two, so we got the glasses to go along with this. All right, guys. So at number 10, we have Sogalio Prism uh, Star, I guess. Prism Star? I don't know what you call it. Um, now, these are the new thing, new mechanics to Pokemon. Uh, they have the Prism Star rule. You can only have more than one Prism Star with the same name in your deck. So you can only have one Sogalio Star, Prism Star, and your deck if a prism star would get discarded uh, it gets put in the lost zone instead so this is going to do discard pile it goes in the lost zone which is a mechanic we haven't had in a long time the last time we really saw this function was i think heart goes to silver triumphant stuff like that um i remember the big one was gingar and there was a mew and all this kind of stuff they're prime pokemon they're really really big with the lost zone if you don't know the lost zone is a space above your prize cards so if you want to know where it is that's as wet's where it's going to be at if you don't if you never heard of that uh but so Galio is going to be number 10. He had 15 votes uh, overall out of, I don't know how many people, probably more than over 100. Uh, so he had 15 votes. It has a Radiant Star for each of your opponent's Pokemon to play. Attach a Melody from your Disco Pile to your Pokemon in any way you like. So, so Galio is going to be an end gamer. You know, if you need more energies, all of a sudden you're like, okay, go so Galio, Radiant Star, get all your energies back, and we're going to get him into play, which is really, really nice. You'll see later on we have some metal Pokemon that do love this so Galio Star. Um, it also has Corona Impact, 160, this Pokemon can attack during the next turn, which is nice with the Choice Fan, or you can do 190, and with the Fresh Kakui, you could do 210, which is a great number, uh, hits Zark for knockouts, which the big, it's a big deck right now, Zork is still probably the biggest deck going into Collins Vaza right now. Uh, so it's gonna be number 10, it is Sogalio Prism Star, I don't know if it's called Sogalio Prism or Sogalio Prism Star, uh, we'll find out later on. Pokemon probably does a thing about it. Uh, but next up is going to be Magnezone. Uh, like I said, there's some metal love in the set. Uh, Magnezone had 18 votes. It has that magnetic circuit ability. As often as you like during your turn, before you attack, you may attach a metal energy from your hand to one of your Pokemon. Straight and simple. Um, we like it. We've seen this done multiple times. This, this kind of ability where you attach multiple, multiple energies. You know, we had... Yeah, uh, Blastoise with Deluge, um, we have Infernal Fandango with, um, <clears throat> with Infernape, no, not Infernape, Delphox, uh, and now we're seeing Magnetic Circuit, also there's other Magnetic Zone that has the Lightning ability, you can touch as many Lightning Pokemon for your hand to your Pokemon, but that one hasn't seen too much hype, and the reason why, well, there's not really that good of metal, uh, of Electric tiger, Attacker that doesn't really use this, but Magnet Zone automatically, you think like so Galio, uh, so Galio's really good, you just do 230 or 250, whatever it is, and you just magnetic circuit the energies back onto it, and you start taking knockouts, uh, which is going to combo with so Galio, like you have so Galio GX, you use this ability, you discard your energies, you do that twice, then you get so Galio Prism Star, get them back, uh, if you don't want to use it that way, you can use Magnet Zone, uh, so Metal is getting a lot of hype with the set, which is very fantastic, it also says Zap Cannon 130, not super strong, Choice Spin 160, then you get Kui one. 80, you're really not taking any good knockouts, so you're really not going to be tackling on Magnet Zone. You're going to be using this power of the Pokemon in your deck, and uh, we do have another Pokemon in this list later on that can abuse the Magnet Zone's ability. Uh, so next up 
it is going to be Apollyon. Apollyon has the total command attack. Uh, this attack does 20 damage for each of for each bench Pokemon, not just yours, both yours and your opponents. Uh, so this is really great. Let's say you have five bench, that's 100 damage with choice spend 130, but you know your opponents can have a bench too. Everybody pretty much has a full bench nowadays because you know you get the Tapu Lele, you got Bridget, that's at least four right there. So it's 180 just off of that. So I mean, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, 180 just off of that. You know, Bridget plus three, those 180 plus choice pan. Uh, 210 again, uh, but they're probably going to have more than that, than that uh, to try to knock out your Napoleon. Uh, Zork is our big attacker now, um, which he relies on your bit or on their bench. And so they're relying on their bench. You're going to rely on their bench as well. So you are going to be able to take knockouts fairly easily with Napoleon. The only downside is it does need two energies. It's not just a DC, it's a water and a DC and a colors, but that's where we have, we have stuff like. Uh, counter energy which can help you know accelerate Empoleon. we also have a card later on that we're going to talk about oh, actually don't talk about it at all it didn't make the list uh there is that new energy card uh, super boost energy or something like that uh we have the three stage two is in play it's a little hard to use that energy because i think it's called super boost energy don't get me wrong uh but you need three stage twos in play maybe four i mean i think it's three for sure uh so it's still very hard to use with napoleon you have to get three stage twos out by then uh <laughs> it might not be possible but it's very interesting like i said zark is the biggest stack right now as of right now it is the biggest stack i don't know if it is going to collinsville i don't see why it's not going to be it's still really really strong uh but total command can abuse zark and kind of control control uh can kind of take down zark pretty easily and especially if you have 160 HP, Zark's really not going to one-shot you at all. The most they can do is 120. With Kikui, they do 140. So, you know, Zark's never going to one-shot your Empoleons. You're, they're two-shotting you while you're one-shotting them, which is really nice. And I think Empoleon will be really big if Zark does stay as one of the best decks. Also, Empoleon has 24 votes. We have went to 15, 18, 24. And next up is going to be one of our first GX Pokemon. That's going to be Leafeon GX. It has 200 HP. It has the ability Breath of the Leaves. Uh, if this Pokemon is your act Pokemon once during the turn before you attack, it may heal 50 damage for one of your Pokemon that has any energy attached to it. So basically, you can heal your Pokemon uh, once during the turn, uh, which is somewhat decent. 50 is not too much anymore. Um, like, we're swinging for a ton of damage right now. Like, just look at Solar Ring, just 110. I guess it can make a difference. Uh, just healing 50. Maybe you can do this multiple times. Uh, yeah, if this is act Pokemon. So yeah, you can do this between multiple Leafeons, but even then, I don't... Like, you're healing 100. Uh, maybe you play some other healing cards as well, and then you become a really healing base ability deck. But I don't think what, I don't think we really care about the ability. I think what we care about is something else later on. I'll talk about it here in a second. Uh, Solar Boom does 110. And also with Leafeon, you got to remember there's an energy evolution EV that can you attach a grass energy to it. You can search for Leafeon, evolve straight away, and start using Leafeon stuff. But what we really care about is this Grand Bloom GX. This is where Leafeon is going to shine, and a lot of people are going to be using this Pokemon. Uh, and it has it says for each of these bench Pokemon, for each of your bench basic Pokemon. Search deck for a card that evolves from that Pokemon and put onto that Pokemon to evolve it. Then shelf your deck. Now, this is great. Um, and the biggest one, obviously, you, we've probably seen a ton of people already talk about this, is Leafeon Decidueye. Uh, because with this, you can get Leafeon. You get the Eevee, put a Grass Energy on it, evolve it to Leafeon. Then you can evolve all your relics into Dark Trixes. And the next turn, evolve your Dark Trixes into Decidueyes. You start, you know, doing multiple damage with Decidueye, with Feather Arrow. Then you can use Solar Beam, because you already have a Grass attached for 140, plus a couple um, Feather Arrows. Then you take a Knockouts. The only problem is there's a lot of fast decks nowadays. Uh, Zork can easily, you know, one, it doesn't one-shot Leafeon, but it gets pretty much set up as quick as Leafeon does. You know, Leafeon has to find these multiple Decidueyes, has to find a Grass Energy, has to find DCE, has got to find Choice Fan, it's got to find all this different kind of stuff. But maybe we find a partner with Leafeon, I don't know exactly. Maybe, maybe it is good. Maybe, you know, Decidueye is the way to go. I don't think so. I don't think that Leafeon's actually just there. There's a reason why Leafeon is down at the bottom of the list and the top. Trust me, I love me some grass Pokemon. I was excited when I saw Leafy. I'm like, yes, Decidueye is going to be good again. But I just think it's going to be too slow in the meta. Also, if you go like, let's say you go first, right? You can't use Grand Bloom ASAP. So then you're like, all right, so I'll, I'll just, you know, I'll, I'll bridge it, get down multiple Rallets. The next turn, you're contemplating, well, do I buy my Rallets and Dartrexes? If I don't, 
If I do, then I can't use Grand Bloom GX. If I don't, well, I'm still behind a turn no matter what. So I, I don't think that Leafeon is the way to go. I, I think it is a really cute GX attack, but I don't think it's it's 100% there. I wish Solar was a little bit better of attack. 110, you know, Chili Spin, 140. Then you have to double, you have to like double Feather Arrow for like 180. And then, huh, I don't know, it just... It's not, it's just not there for me. I just can't see Leafeon being that good. I mean, I'm excited to grasp Pokemon and it gets some love. It got 26 votes, but I think there's a reason why it's on the bottom of the list, uh, near the bottom for sure. But I mean, it, it is getting a lot of hype. Like I said, it, the Leafeon Decidueye seems very cool. You can just like start sniping in turn two fairly quickly. And I think it is, yeah, it's probably not that good. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say about that. It is gonna do well, it's gonna do well, but I don't think it's gonna win anything major. I think other decks are gonna outspeed it for sure. Uh, but next up is going to be another non-GX Pokemon, and that's going to be Garchomp. Uh, Garchomp has this Royal Blades attack, and that's where this card kind of shines. But it has 150 HP. It's got Free Retreat, which is really nice. The Free Retreat's fantastic. You can just switch between different Pokemon uh, really quickly. It's got Quick Dive, 50 damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon, and Royal Blades. This is where the card's going to shine, and everybody's going to start falling in love with it. Uh, Royal Blades, it does 100 damage. If you played a Cynthia from your hand during this turn, this attack does 100 more damage. You might be saying, Squeaky, what's a, what's a Cynthia? Yeah, I don't know what this card does, but don't worry. If you, for some reason, been living under a rock, we'll explain what Cynthia is later on. But Royal Blades, 100, and 100 more damage, so 200. Uh, but it does need a Fighting and DCE. The good thing about this, has 150 HP. Our boy Zark can't really one-shot a Garchomp, but it's two-shotting it, so it's a little dangerous there. And it's a Dragon type, so uh, later on you're getting a fighty Garchomp, um, which is going to be 100% better than you start you know, hitting Zarks for knockouts, stuff like that. He can be strong energy, stuff like that, which is really cool. But right now he's a Dragon type. He can't abuse strong energies. He can't really do too much damage. Yeah, you can play Choice Man 230. That is great. That is no lie. The problem is here is once again you have to get a, a, a you know a, a a DCE and a Fighting Energy. This is gonna be really hard to keep up. Now there is a Lucario that is in this set as well, which says if you have a, a Garchomp at play, you can search for any card. So obviously Lucario, Garchomp, Cynthia partners really well. It can just help you continuously search for cards. You have Lucario, you can search for cards, you're good to go. And you just grab the DCE, the fighting, whatever you need. You just start taking knockouts, which is great. Um, and yeah, I mean, it, it might, I think this is better. I think this is better than Leafeon, to give you that much. I think it's a lot better than Leafeon. Um, but once again, it's one of those myth-iffy cards. It's a stage two. It's hard to set up. You get Lucario, Garchomp. Um, the good thing about this, the Gibbles and Gabites both have Ascension. So you can immediately just evolve to whoever you want to. If you go first, start multiple Gibbles. Next turn, you you, gibble, you evolve Gibble to Gabite. Then you Gabite to get Ascension, which is really great. I think that's a really good attack. To set up your Garchomp, try to set up as quickly as possible. And the big thing here is, can your Garchomp survive multiple turns? If they can, then it's a fantastic card. You're going to places, and then you're going to take knockouts. You're going to do great. But after that first two turns, how do you combat other cards? Uh, there's other stuff later on that we're going to talk about that can easily knock out these Garchomps. Zork, once again, he's not knocking a Garchomp. Only does 120. Um, with, you know, Kakili, he's doing 140. Still not knocking you out, so that's great. Yeah, you're going to survive two turns with uh, Zork. You're going to be able to one-shot them. That's fine. I think we do have a lot of cards that are countering Zork. I think it's saying, hey, you know, Zork, your time is coming soon. We're finding cards that can beat you. And I think that's what we're going to see with the new Ultra Moon, Ultra Sun deck, Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon, Ultra Sun. But uh, the good thing about Garchomp, and I, I didn't talk about this earlier, is with Garchomp and, you know, Empoleon, Magnezone, if you went to any of the pre-releases, these cards were fairly easy to get. They were in the pre-release kits. You were guaranteed either like an Empoleon, Garchomp, or um, <clears throat> a Magnezone. I literally got all these cards. From the two pre-releases that I played, I got a whole play set of them just for playing the pre-releases, which is why you need to go to these pre-releases. You get these little box, you get a kit, you get to play some Pokemon, it's a lot of fun, and you get these really playable cards nowadays with these decks. So I really do encourage people to go to these pre-releases. You already had your play set of Garchomps and Polyons, Magnus, if you went. If you got lucky, I know I did, I got a play set of those. You could have maybe traded for some more Garchomps, whatever you wanted to later on, and instead of buying them, if you did want to play them, I like I said, I already got my play set with me. Uh, so yeah, there we go. But Garchomp did have 27 votes. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So over halfway uh, right now. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yeah, yeah. 
Garchomp is at number 5 with 27 votes. So there's barely beaten Leaf uh, Leafeon by 1. So it went 15, 18, 24, 26, 27. And next up is going to be Cyrus. Now, this Cyrus did get an errata. It is getting an errata to it. It is already... It was like, Pokemon's already like, okay, all right, Pokemon's already like, all right, this card's broken. What, what did we do? Uh, there was a mistranslation with Cyrus, but I think this card is still going to be very, very good. Um, the original card says you can't play this card if you don't have a water or metal Pokemon to play. But now it says you can't play this card if you don't have a water or metal Pokemon in your active spot. So a water or metal has to be in your active spot, which is still not that bad. A lot of decks play Octillery. You can abuse this card. And these new metal decks are also going to love Cyrus as well that we've been talking about, you know, with Magnezone and stuff like that. But it says your opponent chooses two bench Pokemon and shuffles the others and all cards attached them into their deck. So once again, get Zark. You know, they're going to fill the bench up. They're going to have five bench Pokemon. Then you're going to put down Cyrus and you look at them. And they're going to be like, oh man, I got to pick two of my Pokemon to shuffle the rest back into my deck. I worked so hard to get these. Now, reckon, you know, one of those is going to be Tapu Lele. But the other two are probably not going to be Tapu Lele. So they're going to shuffle back into the deck. You don't have to worry about them. It's going to take them a lot of setup. And you're going to be good to go. I think this is where Cyrus does shine. I think that's why a lot of people love this card. Just being able to kind of disrupt your opponent. You can only play one of these, so it kind of comes when you draw into it, because you're always in that weird situation of, well, don't want to play Sycamore, don't want to play Cyrus, don't want to disturb my opponent, don't want to set up more. I think that's going to be kind of the downside with Cyrus, because once you discard it, it goes into the Lost Zone instead of going into the discard pile, so you really can't get it back as of right now. But still, I think Cyrus is a fantastic card. I think it's going to be really strong because we played in almost every single deck that does have these metal or water Pokemon in it. Because you can always like get a Pokemon knocked out, send up an Octillery, use Cyrus, disrupt your opponent, uh, retreat back and take a knockout. Then your opponent only has one Pokemon on the bench, one in the active, and they're going to be in a world of trouble. So I think Cyrus is going to be seeing a lot of play, and I think it's going to be a really sought after card. It does have 28 votes, uh, just one over Garchomp, so we're, you know, 26, 27, 28. But here in a second, the numbers are going to skyrocket. They're going to be night and day. You're going to be like, all right, this is where people love these cards. So next up, it's going to be a card that has 30 votes. We jumped up two, and that is going to be Dustmane Necrozma GX. All righty. Now, like I said earlier... We had Magnezone. Magnezone is how we're going to power up some of our Pokemon. And the big ones is going to be Dustmane and Necrozma GX. He's got 190 HP. He needs an Ultra Beast. He's got Claw Slash 60. Meteor Tempest uh, does 220. Discard 3 energy from this Pokemon. It does need 4 energies. But with Magnezone, you can easily accelerate energies back into this Dustmane Necrozma and start taking some big knockouts. He's a basic Pokemon. You don't have to evolve him. Um, also, you have cards like Mount Cornet that can get energies out of your discard pile, put into your hand. It didn't make the list, but it did have some votes. Um, but just getting metal energies out of your discard pile back in your hand is really good. You still have energy level. You can still play a bunch of energies. You could probably put like Octillery in your deck as well. Maybe play an Octillery, Magnezone, and a Crosma deck. It sounds very clunky, but I think it does. I think it does work. I think it will work for sure. And also, we have a new card later on that we're going to show that it's going to help dress main a Crosma uh, for sure. Uh, but 220 is fantastic. Choice fan 250. You're knocking out of everything in the game. You don't care. You don't care. Just take a knockout. So you're gonna get, you're gonna win games just by Meteor Tempest, which is really strong. It also has Sun Eclipse GX 250. You can only use this attack if you have more price cards remaining than your opponent. So if you're down on price cards, let's say you have you have more price cards left remaining than your opponent. So you have six, they have five. You can use Sun Eclipse 250, knock out whoever you want to, and start taking some names for sure, which is really really good. Does an auto knockout. And it's really good in this deck because you are going to be behind uh, just because, you know, you're setting up, you know, Stage 2, uh, Magnezone, maybe get the Octillery. But with Sun Eclipse GX and Cyrus both coming into this deck, I think it's going to be really, really strong. It's probably the strongest deck out of this out of this new, like, set that we're getting. I think it's fantastic. I think Meteor Tempest is going to be really, really strong. 220 knocks out remotely everything in the game nowadays, and I think it's going to be a fantastic card, and I can't wait to see Dustman and Krosma in action. Like I said, this one at 30, uh, so two ups from uh, Cyrus, so we're, you know, 15, 18, 24, 26, 27, 28, and 30, and that's going to be at fourth place. Wait, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, I think Cyrus is 5, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, because... Yeah, Cyrus is actually number 5. Sorry about that. Garchomp was 6. Leafeon was 7, 8, 9, 10. Yeah, sorry about that, but Cyrus is number 5. I don't know why I miscounted earlier. Garchomp 6, Leafeon 7, Polion 8, Magnus on 9, and so Galio Star 10. Uh, so yeah, <clears throat> Dustmane is going to be at number 4. 
But uh, next up, we go from 30 to 36 votes, and uh, it's a very simple card, and that is going to be Palpad. Palpad had 36 votes. Wow, it's at the number three spot, and I did not see this one coming, actually. Uh, but it's a very simple card. It's a reprint. We've seen it before. Shuffle two supporter cards from your Discord pile into your deck. And that's it. You just shuffle two from your Discord pile back into your deck. Now, the key thing to note is you still can't shuffle those Pokemon, those cards in the Lost Zone like Cyrus. So once Cyrus is played, like I said earlier, it doesn't go to your Discard pile. It goes to the Lost Zone, so Palpad cannot retrieve it back. But getting two supporter cards from your Discard pile is going to be so strong. And... Um, I can't wait to see what this impact kind of makes. Like, what cards do you want to cut to put Pow Pow in your deck? Um, maybe it's not going to make an impact. I don't know. I I'm, I honestly don't think it's going to be that much of an impact. I I don't think it's going to be. Um, that's what I'm just going to say. I don't think we have a lot enough room to put Pow Pads in there. Uh, VS Seeker was a little bit better because VS Seeker put the um, put it back into your hand. And I don't think Pow Pads can be played as much. I hate to say that. I, I, I think there's a lot of hype behind it. I do see that. Yeah, like getting your support cards, really, really strong. That's great. Late game, you can Pow Pad your Lysander, or not your Lysander, just your, your, um, your Guzma's back in your deck. But I don't think Pow Pad is going to be played as much as we think at first. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's going to be played everywhere. I don't think so, though. Uh, but still a really, really inter interesting effect. Just shuffling two support cards, free of this back into your deck. It seems really strong on paper, right? Um, but it doesn't go into your hand, which is the only downside. But still, it's going to be really strong. I think I'd rather just put like four puzzles in my deck before putting in four pal pads. If you if you found a spot support, if you found a spot for four pal pads, I think you need to reconsider putting four puzzles in there. That's my idea. Um, don't steal it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, there we go. Pal pad did get 36. So it does have a lot of hype. People are loving this card. They love to give back to supporter cards. Maybe people will start cutting like down on supporter cards. But like I said, the difference between this and VS Seeker is VS Seeker put it back into your hand. While Pow Pow put it in your deck, it doesn't guarantee you a supporter card ASAP, which is why I kind of rather put another supporter card over Pow Pad if you have the space. I'd rather put a, a supporter card over uh, Pow Pad. But if you have so much space where you have like, you can put Pow Pads and have a billion supporter cards, then maybe you should put puzzles. And then after puzzles, then maybe you put in Pow Pad. That's what I would say. But it did have 36. It is in number three spot. And I'm going to be, maybe I'll, maybe I'll bite my tongue in at uh, Collinsville. We'll see a ton of Pow Pad being played but at number two spot it jumps up for 36 to 58 it is a big difference it's by 22 votes more and that is gonna be glaceon gx we know this we love this card everybody is very hyped for this card it has 200 hp and the reason why everybody loves this is for this freezing gaze ability uh, as long as this pokemon is your act pokemon your opponent's gx and ex pokemon in play in their hand and in the disco pile have no abilities except for freezing gaze so yes this card is going to shut down cards like zark they cannot use trade it will shut down tapu lele they can't use wonder tag and this is a game changing card um, it's it's attack is frost bullet 90 and 30 It's not that great. I'm not gonna lie to you. It's not the great attack But just freezing gaze by itself is gonna shut down so many decks by itself Like if your opponent is still playing like a straight Zark deck. You're like all right, that's cute I'm just gonna freeze and gaze you. I'm gonna slow you down. You're not gonna be able to do anything We're gonna be the same space, but I have a better attack now. I can put my own Zarks in my deck and uh, actually trade while you can't so i think it's gonna be a big thing for sure i think it is a, i think it is gonna get a lot of hype because i think it's gonna be a lot of play i think it is a very good a card and i'm 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 interested to see what we're gonna see there's two different kind of glaceons decks floating around that i've seen right now there is the glaceon straight like the straight like energy disruption glaceon you can't goose them around it whatever and there's the zork version which is like i'm gonna slow you down why i still have my zorks uh to trade and stuff and i don't know which one's gonna be better uh, they're very. This set's still very new, and like I said, two weeks we have Collinsville, so I have two weeks to test the set. Oh my goodness, I can't believe we only have two weeks to test this set before Collinsville comes alive, and I'm excited to see what is going to happen at Collinsville. Um, but yeah, there's Glaceon GX. It also has Polar Polo Spear uh, GX. This act is 50 damage for each damage counter your opponent's act Pokemon. Uh, I don't, uh, whatever. That's fine. I guess it's, uh, yeah, this act is 50 damage for each damage counter your opponent's act Pokemon. Maybe do 90 and 30. 90 and 30 has 60, so you do 300 damage. Uh, maybe you publish for one guy for 30. Then you do 150 with choice in 180. It could be, that's a good attack. I think it's fine. I think it's actually really fine too because it needs a water and DC just as the frost bull attack does need as well. Um, 
but yeah, Glaceon is a game changer. It's going to change a bunch of different things. It's going to, you know, are we going to play more, are we going to play less Lele's in our deck? Once again, we have the Energy Evolution Eevee. You just have your Water Energy, find Glaceon, and then you turn on Freezing Gaze, and you shut down Lele's turn one. I think we are going to see a lot more supporter cards going into decks uh, to counter this Glaceon for sure. Um, and yeah, that's all I got to really say for this Glaceon. That's the number two spot with 58 votes. But next up with 79 votes, we're talking 21 more than Glaceon. We're talking, what, 43 more than Palpad. And that is going to be Cynthia. Cynthia is definitely the most hyped card of the set. Now, guys, you've always said, you know, Literally, there's a card right in front of me. Every time I get one, I, t I cut it in half. I literally hate Shauna. I'm always like, Pokemon, what are we doing? Why are we reprinting Shauna? Why do we have Shauna in this set? We have a card like Professor Nook's New Theory, uh, which Shuffle Draw 6. Why did we wait so long to print this card? We have Shauna with Shuffle 5, and everybody hates the card. Everybody hates Shauna. It doesn't matter who you talk to. Like... They hate Shauna, but now it's with Cynthia, you shuffle draw six. I don't know what the difference is. I don't know why people care so much. I don't know why people care so much about the one card extra, but I do too. I hate Shauna. I hate Shauna so much. I shuffle draw five, but with Cynthia, you shuffle draw six. And there we go. Oh my goodness. Where has this been our whole life? Like I said, it has 79 foes. And it also has this really sick full art. And guys, there we go. There's a top 10 cards. Um... Just top 10 cards. Now, the thing with Cynthia, we have to start, you know, figuring out is what's the count of stuff. I think for sure you still play 4 in. I think you always play 4 in just trying to disrupt your opponent. Like, if they go up in prizes, you want to end them down a lower hand size. You want to disrupt them for sure. And uh, I think when you want to start cutting into your Sycamores, you want to play less Sycamore, you have Cynthia. So we don't have to discard resources anymore. Like I said, with Destiny, Nesme, Necrozma, with all these, like, rare candy decks, you can put Cynthia in there and make it where you don't have to discard your rare candies. You don't have to discard your Pokemon. You can just, you know, shuffle, draw a new hand. You have to discard your resources, and hopefully later on you can draw those. And I think that's where Cynthia is going to be a game changer, helping you save your resources later on. But, guys, there we go. <clears throat> There's your top ten list from uh, Ultra, Ultra Prism. I forget what that's called already. Uh, once again, it's Cynthia. It is Glaceon number two, Palpat number three, Dustman number four, Cyrus number five, Garchomp number six, Leafeon number seven, and Polo number eight, Magnuson number nine, and so Galio as number ten. And there we go, guys. There's the Ultra Prism top ten. Uh, I guess most hype cards. It's not really the best. We don't know what the best is yet. It still has yet to be determined. But guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if what are these cards. If your card did not make the set, there was at least 30 or 40 different entries on this list. But that would, that, yeah, there we go. And that was the most hype cards uh, for Ultra Prism. Like I said, two weeks. We got we got Collinsville. We're gonna see what's gonna happen. I'm excited to see what's gonna go on in the Collinsville. I think it's two weeks. If I, it's not. If it's not two weeks, wait, it's not this weekend. Next weekend, it's the weekend of uh, 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 Valentine's Day weekend. So I think it's like three weeks. Sorry, it's not this weekend. It's not the weekend after. It's the weekend after that. Yes, it's the Valentine's Day weekend. Um, Valentine's Day is 14th. Yeah, yeah, so it's a two weekends actually. Yeah, not just not three weekends. I guess three weekends. I keep saying some wrong thing, but it's Valentine's Day weekend. I know that for sure. It's not this weekend, not the following weekend, the weekend after that. It's gonna be Collinsville Regional. So three weekends to test the set to see what is gonna be the best best stack from Ultra Prism, and I can't wait to see what's gonna happen. Uh, hopefully, it's streamed. So we see all that live on the internet. But guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Hit the subscribe button. We'll see you tomorrow with some of the best decks from Expanded from the past weekend. Have a great day, guys. Alrighty. Bye.